Hey, hey guys, Adam here with another educational video. This will be a short video to clear up a couple things regarding aircraft climb rate. You can think of this video as aircraft rate of climb explained at part 2, so be sure to check out part 1 first to properly understand this video. Without further ado, let's zoom right into it. Let's begin by taking a look at this graph. This is a graph of the altitude as a function of time for the P-47D28 at two different climb speeds. 250 IS in blue and 300 IS in red. The time starts ticking at 206 IS shortly after takeoff in both cases. What can we conclude from this time to altitude graph? The 250 IS climb reaches 5 km of altitude 6.5 seconds before the 300 IS climb. So can we say that climbing at 250 is more efficient than climbing at 300? We cannot. Don't forget that the P-47 had to accelerate for longer to reach the 300 climb speed unfairly hurting its time to altitude result. That's why time to altitude tests starting from the runway would give an optimal climb speed slower than the actual result. This might seem obvious to some, but you still need to be careful of this kind of thing when analyzing data. The next thing to be wary about is far more sneaky and insidious in nature, so let's set it, shed some light on that. So we know that a time to altitude graph starting from the runway is not a good way to find the optimal climb speed. However, the derivative or slope of the time to altitude graph gives the climb rate in meters per second. Wouldn't that be a good way to find the optimal climb speed? It's certainly better than the time to altitude test starting from the runway, but there is still one problem with that method which is very sneaky. On the graph, the 250 and 300 slopes are very close, but the 250 slope is just a tad bit steeper as indicated by the bigger time difference at high altitude than at low altitude. According to the slope method, the 250 climb is more efficient than the climb at 300, but is that really the case? This method still doesn't capture one more aspect of climb, which is the acceleration of the aircraft during the climb to keep IS constant. After overcoming drag, the engine power either goes into increasing the altitude or potential energy of the aircraft, or into increasing the speed or kinetic energy of the aircraft, or a combination of both. A climb at constant IS is a combination of both, because the aircraft requires an increase in true airspeed to keep IS constant as altitude increases because of the reduction in air density. The faster you go, the higher the proportion of engine power that goes into increasing your TAS at the expense of increasing your climb rate. So the lower your apparent climb rate will be, and that explains why the 250 climb rate slope is higher than the 300 slope. As proof, let's compare the ending energies of both climb speeds after 240 seconds of climb. After 240.6 seconds, the 250 IS climb reaches 4,999 meters and 322 kilometers per hour, while the 300 IS climb reaches 4,873 meters and 387 kilometers per hour. So the 250 climb has a 126 meters of altitude lead. Let's convert the TAS into equivalent meters of potential energy and see where things truly stand. 322 kms per hour is converted into 408 meters and 387 kms per hour is converted into 589 meters. The difference gives the 300 IS climb an additional 181 meters of altitude, overcoming the initial 126 meter lead and becoming the more efficient climb speed when compared to the 250 IS climb. Instead of making a time to altitude graph where you purely look at altitude gained, a time to energy altitude graph like this one will show the fair truth. It even works starting on the runway. As you can see on this graph, the 300 IS climb leads in energy gain by nearly 1% over the 250 IS climb, just like we calculated previously. The conclusion is that it's better to think of climb rate as energy gain rates instead, to properly consider kinetic energy and its effects on climb. Just because a Spitfire climbing at 200 km per hour is 100 meters above your BF-109, climbing at 280 doesn't mean it climbed better than you. You actually have more energy than it and your higher speed gives you more flexibility than his higher altitude. Tests that don't take into account the increase in kinetic energy will give slower optimal climb speeds than what they are in reality. Thanks for watching, smash like if you learned something, and I'll catch you in the next one.